I'll do anything for $2.50, so you can stick around. Anyways, Dino Q's. Announcing Dino Q's. Okay, so what is this? In the ever-evolving world of cloud software, Demo, Dino aims to radically simplify, leveraging public cloud infrastructure as tr traditionally demanded, sifting through layers of boilerplate code and intricate configurations, often monopolizing a significant chunk of developers' time and energy. Our goal is to distill these intricacies into user-friendly primitives, enabling developers to design, refine, and launch their projects with unmatched speed. With this in mind, we rolled out Dino KV a few months ago, currently in open beta, anchored on a robust robust capabilities of Foundation DB. How many effing databases are there? Real talk. It feels like once a month, there's just another database I've never heard of. Constantly. It's all just squeal. What does Foundation DB do that the other ones don't do? What about oh, Surreal DB, Scylla DB, Cassandra, Squeal Light? What about uh, MySQL Server 2007 edition, okay? Why is nobody talking about that, okay? Why is nobody talking about it? Dude, it's, 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 it's Excel DB. Okay, that's not access, okay? It's, we call that access, and that's disgusting. I one time did a master's project in Java for a fish hatchery on a supercomputer where I had to write a driver so that we could communicate to an access file via Java. I would read data from an effing access database and then run that shit on a supercomputer. Do you know how that makes you feel when you have to access the world's slowest, dumbest technology ever ideated in mankind and then put that on a supercomputer? Do you realize what I felt like? That's also the time I learned that back. So this was in Java 1.5, I think. And you know how they always suggested uh, getters and setters? I removed getters and setters and put a uh, and just put public properties, and it literally sped up the program like by millions of percents. Obviously, they fixed that over the time, but back then, oh my goodness, was that just a mind-boggling how much faster you can make a supercomputer go by not having function calls? Wild. Anyways, Dino KV is more than just a new persistence option for apps. It's about transforming the developer experience by eliminating redundant configurations and offering a refreshingly streamlined API. Uh, building upon this foundation, <laughs> we are elated to unveil Dino Qs today. This tool is set to revolutionize scalable messaging and uh, elevate the management of background processes in your application. Okay, listen queues, post to Slack, let's go. This is cool. This is actually really cool. I think there's something super clever about this. You could obviously do this with SNS and SQS. This looks like just like something right off of Amazon, right? But to have it built into the language, like as part of the runtime, and then to offer a service on top of it such that you can use these and just launch without thinking, like it's a great business model. I think Dino's making a lot of good plays in the business world, okay? Business. My guess is that Bun's gonna probably try to do some of these things, right? Uh, in this post, we'll cover the key aspects. Okay, what are queues, use cases, pricing, what's next? Let's look at this. What are Dino queues? Dino queues are built on uh, KV, allowing you to offload parts of your application to schedule work for future uh, to run asynchronously. Also, you know what would really work well? If you just use a real language, you wouldn't... Uh, you could process like 10x as much stuff. Anyways, with two new simple APIs with zero configuration or infrastructure to maintain, and Q pushes the new messages into Q, uh, guaranteed to deliver immediately or at a time in the future. L listen Q handler uh, used for processing new messages from the Q. Okay, awesome. Web scale, trademark that. Uh, you know how you web scale? You just use more machines. I, you know, I was playing with React and I was rendering like 100 elements on the server. And I couldn't get the thing to exceed like four RPS. And these weren't complicated elements. Okay, it was more than 100. It was like 1,000. But nonetheless, it was like four. How can you justify owning a machine and get four? Okay? That's crazy. Okay? Four. <laughs> Since queues are built on Dino KV, it uses squeal light. Let's go. Squeal light, terso, hashtag ad. Uh, when running locally in Foundation DB, when running on Dino Deploy for maximum availability and throughput, running queues on Dino Deploy is optimized for performance. Dino Deploy automatically spins up V8 isolates on demand and dispatches messages when they're available for processing. Your application code simply listens to new messages with Listen uh, Queue hand, uh, Handler, and Dino Deploy handles the rest. 
I mean, I love this, all these ideas. It's one thing that's really cool about something like JavaScript is that you can literally just take code eval and it runs, right? This is why you can do these things, right? This is why all this stuff could just exist. You could just launch a new isolate and bada bing, bada boom, you're just running more stuff. Uh, but man, when I read this though, it does feel a bit like gluttony. And what I mean by that is that for you to launch like even startup Dino, startup Bun, startup Node, it takes like 40 to 50 megabytes of VMRSS just to like to do a while loop. So it has to like make all of this stuff happen, then it handles something, and then it goes away. Serverless just seems crazy to me. Just saying, okay? Maybe I'm crazy. Just feels like a lot. Uh, Dino uh, queues guarantee at least once delivery. For most enqueued messages, the listen queue handler will be invoked once. In some failure instances, the, handle, uh, the handler may be invoked multiple times to ensure delivery. It's important design, uh, to design your application to ensure duplicate messages are handled correctly. You can also combine queues with KV atomic transaction primitives, which can unlock powerful workflows. For example, you may add messages to the queue as part of KV transactions, uh, which succeeds or fails automatically. Okay. Get a little bit of that, get a little bit of this, do a little bit of that, not enough balance. Hit him with an atomic, check for that, get the balance, set the balance, and queue this thing, and queue that thing, commit it. Uh, you can also update uh, Dino KV state with your listen queue handler. I mean, this stuff is really convenient, right? To have, to have so much architecture just built directly into what you're using. I think it's pretty nice. That seems pretty nice. You can also update D Dino KV to listen to your uh, listen queue handler. For instance, if you want to ensure that it updates on each message is performed only once, you can add this queue API and KV atomic transactions. All right, listen, nunce, get one of these uh, equals null. This message has already been processed. Why not just add that as like an option to the queue, right? Why make somebody do this? Why don't you just have like an ensure once? Uh, anyways, whatever. Uh, all right, do a little bit of that. We've already seen this one. There we go. A little nuns, random IID, atomic check and queue, set some commit, boom. Does it work without the cloud? I assume you have to have some sort of back end to this. One would assume you need a back end to all this stuff. Additionally, if your a listen uh, queue handler throws an exception, the runtime will automatically retry the call to the handler again until it succeeds or until maximum retry attempts are reached. If maximum attempts reach, default is five, are reached, the message will be dropped. That seems fair. Queues are useful for scaling applications by allowing servers to offload async processing or uh, and schedule work for the future. Yep. Uh, scheduling email notifications. Great example. That's like the classic, right? Everyone's heard of this classic. Exactly once is surprisingly difficult. Well, they, they claim they have it solved right here. They claim it's solved right there. Uh, scheduled email notifications. Sometimes job or task uh, that's initiated by your user may take to uh, enough time to where you don't want to make them wait for the task to complete. Response or there's... a uh, uh, there's no need to send them a response. This is when you can offload work to queue your uh, server or app responsive to your user. Okay, here's how you do it. All right, do a little listen queue, welcome email, send that, do that, awesome, and queue, great, and queue, awesome, bam, bam. Reliable uh, webhook processing, another extremely common example for uh, queues on the web through webhooks. Here's an example of oak and queues to handle webhooks asynchronously. All right. We get a little application. We do a little listing to process webhooks. We have a router. We post webhook. We queue this webhook body. Do something. Get a status. Application. Routes. Allow methods. Listen. Okay. So this is when we get the little queue back. Okay. Cool. And then they just give more examples. Let's see what the pricing is. What is the pricing? Because this is a big one. As you explore the capabilities of queues, it is important to grasp the cost implication. Queues are... Uh, Q has no specific cost of its own, but rather charge in terms of Dino KV operations and key, uh, Dino deploy requests for listening. Specifically, in queuing a message, each enqueued action translates into a KV write operation. Uh, every received message entails a KV write and a single request charge. This transparent pricing structure ensures that you'll only build for the operations you use. I wish they showed us what those prices were. I'm just curious, what, 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 what does it cost? What does it scale to? How big can you get before you're starting to pay a decent amount of money? All right? $5 a month? Five? Is that the same as an Amazon Twitch Prime? Okay, I, this is cool. I mean, I like, I like that they're doing it. I, like, I mean, I like, I like these things, right? I like seeing uh, uh, technologies adapt and make cool stuff, right? Like, I appreciate this. Uh, again, is Dino ever going to be a thing? 
Is it starting to become a thing? I just have my big doubts because, again, I, I say this about every new JavaScript everything, which is what is it offering? Dino seems like it's trying to put itself into the place of uh, infrastructure, kind of like Next.js, but they're doing it as like their own service, even tied to the runtime itself. And so they're just trying to make it so that you can just start using all this stuff right away. Obviously, some of the dangers is if you want to get off of it, building an entire product around it could be difficult, right? It could be difficult. But do you need to get off of it? Your zero user app probably don't need to get off of it. Probably can use it for a long time. Vendor lock-in's real. Vendor lock-in is real, but vendor lock-in is always real. And what I mean by that is one reason why I don't like this argument is what's the alternative? You raw dog Amazon? Well, what's the problem then? You're vendor locked into Amazon. It's really hard to make some sort of vendor non-locked-in solution. You know what I mean? Like, what are you going to do? Make something that can run on both Google uh, Cloud Compute, plus can run on Amazon, plus can run on Azure, right? That sounds hard. Hey, thank you, Danish Produce. Appreciate the five gifted subs. Like, real talk, it sounds really hard. Azure, Google Cloud Compute, Amazon, right? Pricing. Okay, here we go. Uh, KB Storage, free, one gig, nice. Five gigs, okay, okay, ooh. Five gigs, then 50 cents a gigabyte. Okay, interesting. Uh, read units a day, 15,000. Not very many, but again, your zero users can easily scale here. Easily scale here. Writes, okay, you can definitely do a lot of those. Then $1 per million, okay. Interesting. Uh, and then, you remember, each one of these caused a rights. KV is key value. Number of, uh, of DB regions, that's also interesting. Terso's, I think Terso, see the problem, Dino's interesting because Dino's competing on all all sorts of different, they're competing on many axes, right? Like this is like a direct competition of going against Amazon. Maybe they just wrap Amazon, but it's like they're, they're going directly against it, right? My guess is they just wrap it, so they're not really going against it. They just give Amazon free business. Um, also, it seems interesting, max monthly usage, $250. Oh, interesting. So you have to go into a custom plan. If you do, how many? That's not, I mean, that's not that much, right? That'd be a hundred. That'd be, I guess that's a hundred million. That's a lot. Okay, never mind. That's a decent amount. You could make it pretty far here. You could make it pretty far. I don't know where they, I don't know where they, they live, right? Wrap Amazon. I know it's Foundation DB, but where, where are they putting it all, right? Are they still hosting it and running it on Amazon? So it's like, is Amazon ever actually losing? I don't know. I have no idea, right? Uh, this is required for a to-do app in 2023? Absolutely. Every to-do app needs to be able to have an SNS, SQS style queue listener as to-dos come in. Because, I mean, what happened if you get millions all of a sudden, right? What happened if all of a sudden you went from none and now you need 10 million people, right? You need to be able to handle it. It's very important, okay? It's very important, because your to-do app is the greatest. I've seen many to-do apps. Your to-do app is the greatest. The greatest to-do app I've ever seen. Most eloquent, most on time, greatest to-do app. Uh, hey, the name is I really am still just curious. What is the sell for Dino, right? Because you're still just V8, but with a slightly different runtime than Node in which you're effectively selling the runtime experience. Like, are people actually really leaning in? Are people really doing it? Is it really actually working or is it not? I don't, I don't know. I'm actually very curious. Is Dino growing in adoption or is it not? It'd be kind of neat to find out. I'd be very happy about that. Like and subscribe again. <laughs>